it's like, dang, can I catch a break? Like, dang, I'm one person. Like, can I catch a break, God? Welcome back to my channel. It is Michelle here. If you are new here, hey, welcome. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and join this family here. Today's video is exciting. This is the first of many. My first ever episode for Bible Talk Time. It is a series, guys. We are making this into a series and I'm super excited. Just from you guys' encouragement and from just the things I've been thinking, I was like, Michelle, why don't you go ahead and make Bible Talk Time a series? So here we are on our first episode and I'm so excited. Today though, we're going to be talking about disappointments. Disappointments, unfortunately, are something that we all go through and something that we don't want to experience but unfortunately we do experience in life and when it does happen how do we move on from disappointment today's episode i'm going to be sharing my experience with disappointment and i do want to say you know it's one thing when you feel as though a person disappointed you where it be your boyfriend where it be your husband where it be your girlfriend your wife your mom your dad your friends it's one thing when someone physical or human disappoints you and there's a whole nother level of disappointment when you feel as though god has disappointed you which is where my story is coming from i do want to take you guys back to 2021 which is when i experienced this emotion but before we do that i do want to start off by reading today's scripture because this is bible talk time how can we do bible talk without a scripture the scripture is coming from proverbs 13 verses 12 which reads hope deferred makes the heart sick but when desire is fulfilled it is a tree of life and i want to read another version this is from the message and it says unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick but a sudden good break can turn life around honestly disappointments can literally crush your spirit it can crush your heart um so it's not a pleasant thing to go through at all if you guys are going through a disappointment right now or if you have experienced disappointment in the past you know exactly what i'm talking about please go ahead and share how you moved on from the disappointment you experienced let me know in the comments below but moving on to me 2021 and my disappointment experience so i just want to share um, a journal entry that i wrote for you guys so this is dated and timed 4 30 2021 11 30 p.m i write this as i cry matter of fact every entry of this month has been written with tears i experienced a myriad of emotions these 30 days i cried a lot every night i've been anxious a lot felt an immense amount of pain and disappointment disappointment in god he is holy michelle he can't disappoint you i'm disappointed in the fact that i thought i was hearing from god but turns out i wasn't this month did not go as how I expected it at all. This is something I've never felt before. I'm trying to compare it to how I felt last year, but it's different. I don't know how to describe this kind of pain. I am exhausted, spiritually exhausted. I told God I want to rest. And that was my journal entry and how I was feeling April of 2021. And I want to give you guys a background of where these emotions came from. So I rededicated my life to God in 2020. And that year I was getting so many dreams. I was thinking that God was talking to me. I was thinking that I was hearing from him and the things that I thought he was telling me would happen. So I'm like, okay. I was like, okay, well, God really does speak. Okay. So then towards the end of the year, I started hearing a, a specific kind of instruction from him in where I was like, God, is this you? Like, are you, are you talking to me? So I was like, okay, let me pray over it. And when I was praying, you know, I thought I was getting confirmation from other people. Like the things other people would tell me would kind of align with what I thought God was telling me. So therefore I was like, okay, God, maybe this is you. He had specific details that he wanted me to follow. So I was like, okay, God, as crazy as the seems i'm going to believe that you are indeed talking to me and the things that he was telling me to do guys was costly okay this was not a cheap instruction it required 
some monetary involvement and I required faith. So before I moved on to the instructions, to doing the instructions, I was like, okay, God, I am going to fast for 40 days. I'm going to make sure that when I get to where you're telling me to go to, things will fall into place and everything's going to work out. So I fasted, you guys, for 40 whole days. I did not eat. God, I mean this. Let's do it. Let's go. But tell me, let's go. Let's do it. So did not eat for 40 to 40 days i was praying i was just doing all the things so the time comes in where i feel like these instructions need to be followed through so i even involved other people in it i involved other people into what i thought god was telling me so now not just only i know what i thought god is telling me other people are involved and they're waiting they're expecting this thing to happen so i'm like okay god god gave me specific dates that i was looking forward to there were two dates one of those days i didn't know what exactly was going to happen but i was hearing him tell me that something was going to happen on those dates um and so you know i followed his instructions and i followed through with a plan i showed up you know in my eyes I showed up. I was like, God, I'm going to show up for this. So the first date occurred and what I was expecting to see, to hear, to do did not happen. I was utterly crushed. I was like, okay, okay, calm down, Michelle, calm down, Michelle. Um, it's not over yet. He gave me two dates, this first date and then the second date. Calm down. It's not over. So I was like, okay, God. Even though every single night I was praying, I was having panic attacks, I was like just hyperventilating, just praying, crying, sobbing. I'm like, God, I followed your instructions. I spent so much money. Other people are involved. Like, are you just gonna leave me here without doing what you said you're going to do? What happened to God is not a man that he should lie? What? So what like am I crazy? Like what just happened like why didn't i experience what i thought i was going to experience so the days went on what days went on and then the second date came and again nothing that i thought god was telling me was going to happen happened and i'm like oh no oh no literally i was utterly crushed you guys i was utterly crushed i was like I am just crazy at this point. These things that I thought I was hearing, these dreams that I thought I was having, it was all in my head. Like, God, are you even real? I really started to question my relationship with God. I really started to doubt my relationship with God. I was like, wow, I cannot believe that I involved other people in this. I cannot believe that I moved in faith and my expectation did not materialize i moved in faith i thought the bible says all you need to do is have faith and i had faith i thought i came all the way here i had faith but what i was expecting did not occur so i was so hurt you guys i was so hurt like it was a different kind of pain like i said man disappointing you is one thing you know that a man human being let me say human being can fail you they are fallible beings they are not immutable they are flesh so they can fail you but god trying to comprehend that god failed you is like a whole nother another mindset or it's like a whole nother thing to decipher and you can't because he's god and he's sovereign and he can do whatever he wants so after I thought about it, I'm like, okay, Michelle, maybe God wasn't talking to you because clearly nothing materialized, nothing happened. So then who have you been listening to? Who have, who's who been showing you these dreams? Who's been speaking to you? So I really got to the point in where I was questioning my faith quite a bit. I was just like doubting, doubting, doubting and just crying a lot. And I was just so disappointed, so crushed indeed. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. My heart was sick. <laughs> My heart was sick. And it's like the one person or the one deity that I thought had my back, where did he go? And during this time as I was praying, I couldn't hear from him. I wasn't hearing from him. It's like as if he told me to do something and then he disappeared, you know? I was angry at one point because I'm like, like what the heck just happened? But as I worked through my emotions, I was like, Michelle, God is God and you are human, okay? You, if you believe what the Bible tells you, then know that there, 
there's a reason behind this. So I just really came to a point in where it was like, Michelle, where else are you gonna go? Like, although God, you think God has disappointed you, where else can you go? Like, man, man cannot do anything for you. So in my prayer times, I was like, okay, God, you got me. I'm here. Let's let's do this. So it came to the point in where it's like, I didn't have anything else but God, even though he disappointed me. I couldn't run anywhere else. I couldn't go anywhere else. He was still all I had left. Working through that disappointment took some time, but I knew that God was still God. I knew that although I feel as though he's disappointed me, my Bible tells me that he is not a man that he should lie. He is not a God that disappoints people. So this feeling that I have right now is not of God. This feeling that I have right now, although it is real, although I do recognize that I am disappointed, I am heart sick, the feeling is real. It is as real as it gets because my heart is literally breaking. Like I feel an immense amount of sadness and pain. The feeling is real. But that does not negate who I know God to be. So once I realized that, I repented and I asked God to forgive me for doubting, I guess, or just like thinking that he was wicked. <laughs> um, and forgive me for having pride. It all boils down to pride and thinking that because I thought God was telling me one thing, he has to do it. It was just really prideful in how I was thinking, how I was moving. So I came to a point in where I had to repent from feeling like that and feeling super prideful. And although, like I said, my emotions at the time were valid, my human feelings does not override truth does not override god it does not override his word so as much as i am sad as much as i am feeling disappointed god is still on his throne god is still god and he can change circumstances just like that so i still held on to that and I repented and I prayed and asked for forgiveness for just being prideful and moving in pride. Another reason why I was prideful was because of the fact that I involved other people into what I thought God was telling me and the fact that now I'm gonna be looked at as a liar, as a crazy person, as someone who is just, I don't know, crazy. Cause how can you involve people into something and then it not happen? So I, I think part of the pride was coming from the fact that other people knew about what I thought God was telling me and then it didn't happen. So therefore I'm like a false, a false prophet or something like that. And I didn't want to be known as that. So um, it was really hard. It was really hard getting over it, but it took time. It took time. But like I said, I resolved to just really repenting and asking God to forgive me for moving in pride. Although I am disappointed, God is still God and I just need to trust and believe that and believe when he tells me that he is good, when he tells me that he loves me, when he tells me that in Jeremiah 29 11, that he has good plans for me, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, plans to give me hope and a future. I need to really believe that. Being disappointed is just such an awful feeling to endure and it's, and it's even worse when you feel like it reoccurs. It's like, dang, can I catch a break? Like, dang, I'm one person. Like, can I catch a break, God? It, it takes a toll on the body. It takes a toll on the mind. You will start to question, uh, I, you know, I start to question Christianity. At one point, I questioned it a lot. I'm like, man, this, this is just too much. I just wanna give in, I just wanna give up and just not even think about think about God. Coming out of that, I had to really fight my for my faith. I had to really, really push for my faith i had to really pray a lot i had to really cry a lot i had to to read my bible a lot and it was a slow process i felt as though i was knocked down okay i was knocked down but slowly but surely was able to crawl my way back up and since that disappointment I, I don't think I had experienced anything like that before my relationship with god because prior to that moment I felt like God and I were like this, like I hear him, I hear him, I hear him and it materializes, it happens. So when I was disappointed, I felt like that separated our relationship. So therefore I couldn't hear from him. I went 
maybe like a year without really really dreaming as much as i was because now i'm doubting now it's like the, let's say i had a dream last night and like is that from god or is this my mind playing tricks on me so there was a lot of internal battles that i was dealing with which was decreasing my faith in god but like i said once i was knocked down it took time it took effort to really try to to make it back and to be honest you guys i have not gone back to my first year relationship with god and where you know it's like I was just so, not naive, but I was very, very like optimistic in that sense, you know, but I feel like that was a whole, that was a part of God maturing me to know that am I going to stick with him through thick or thin, whether he does what he, I think he's telling me he's going to do or whether he doesn't do it, am I going to stick with him? I felt like that was a test of my stance with him that am I going to stick it out? Am I going to still trust him? Am I still going to be still be there? Um, and it took some time. It took some time for me to try to get my faith back up, but I eventually was able to do it. And honestly, I'm now taking life like day by day and I'm being more cautious with the things that I think God is telling me. And just like knowing that if he indeed said it, it's going to happen. And I just need to rest in that, you know? Dealing with disappointment is really tough, you know? Especially if it's like on a level that you can't really express, on a level that you can't really explain. Like I said, if a human being disappoints you, okay, fine, that's expected because they are human. But when you feel like God has disappointed you, it, it's a whole nother level of, of, of sadness. And one scripture that really encouraged me was, was Romans 8, 28, I believe where it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who have been called according to his purpose. There are certain things that we encounter, certain life experiences we go through that does not make sense, that we question a lot. I firmly believe that one day, one day, it's going to make sense and I'm going to realize why I thought God was telling me to do all those things and how much I have grown. You know, in those moments, I was like, Michelle, if you don't go through these things, how are you going to encourage somebody to have faith when things seem dead, when things seem like they will not um, work out for them? How are you going to be able to encourage someone if you don't go through moments like these? So it's all a part of the process and it's all a part of the process of God maturing you into the person that he's called you to be so if you are experiencing disappointment where it be in god where it be you praying for healing for someone and you feel as though it has not occurred or where it be as though you're praying for a job um, a husband for friends money to to relocate just keep praying that's like the best advice that i can give man just to keep on praying kids to keep on praying the story that really encourages me when i feel like so i'm praying i'm praying and nothing's materializing is the woman who went to the unjust judge for a favor so there was a woman in the bible who kept going to see this judge for a certain matter and every time she would go the judge would ignore her but she was persistent and one day when she went to see the unjust judge the judge was like you know what lady you bother me too much so let me just go ahead and give you what you're requesting and then the bible goes on and tells us that if this is how an unjust judge reacts to persistence imagine your heavenly father if you keep going to him in prayer and that has just been so powerful so whenever i'm like feeling as though god is not answering my questions or if god is not answering my prayers i just remember that scripture and i persist and i persist and i persist and i love the acronym push pray until something happens it's gonna happen guys it's gonna happen it's just a moment of us having patience and just like trusting really trusting in him and just sticking with him through thick or thin um that is what that experience of disappointment taught me am i gonna stick with god through thick or thin and that has been the lesson that i have learned from it i hope this story encourages you i hope this was a good first bible talk time if you guys have any contributions go ahead and leave it in the comments below if you guys have any episode suggestions please go ahead and leave it in the comments below for me and yeah we will get to talking about it in bible talk time hashtag btt let me know if you guys are watching okay but yes guys thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to y'all in the next video bye